Yeah, Eric here from Laser Scanning TV uh, company, Laser Scanning Europe, and I today uh, I have a guest. Uh, maybe you introduce you. Well, hi, my name is Janis Wolfle, and I'm a student, and I'm recently working in this company here. And I, one of my project was to test the accuracy of SLAM scanners. And this we show in this video in which SLAM scanner you tested. Um, I tested the SLAM scanner, the little one from Xcrit, that's called the Lixel Kitty K1. Okay, and this, everything about AQC you can see in this video, stay tuned. Before we started, maybe you can introduce you a little bit deeper so to the audience that they understand so what, what is your why you are searching in SLAM AQC. Yeah, my name is Janis Wölfle and I'm studying at uh, Geomatic at the State University of Applied Science. It's short called uh, HTW in Dresden. And Which is in I'm, Germany, for the audiences in uh, East Germany, so. Yes, and I'm actually in the sixth semester and I did some research, which I will show you in a short presentation. Okay, then let us start direct. Yeah, maybe uh, some people know uh, Xcrit is actually super present in 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 the yeah, in the internet and social media. So, but maybe for the people that don't know Xcrit, so maybe you can explain something to Xcrit and to K1. Yeah, the Xcrit is a young Chinese company that specializes in 3D reconstruction and spatial computing. They are recently a partner company of LSE. And they got solutions for converting real object, uh, objects and environments into digital 3D models. And according to the manufacturer, it is the first company in the mode by SLAM scanner industry to combine visual and LiDAR SLAM. I'm not totally sure if they are the, really the first and only one, but uh, I think there's not so many. So I don't know another one, So, but maybe there's another one. So yeah, okay, let us move forward. Yeah, actually, I think Xcrit have uh, two systems. Uh, yeah, maybe you can uh, tell a little bit more about uh, both systems and especially the K1, what we tested. Yeah, uh, we, here we can see the two mobile scanners from Xcrit. Uh, on the left side, the short version, and on the right side, the bigger version. And the short version was that one which I tested, and it has a range uh, about 0 0.1 to 70 meter. The scan frequency is about 200,000 points per second and a camera resolution of 48 um, NP. And on the right side, we see the bigger version, which has a higher range and a higher scan frequency. And we also see how the scanners are set up. So at the bottom, we see the base plate, which is used um, to hold up uh, the ground control points while you are scanning. And then we have the, the battery handle and the scanner. And on the top is a RTK module. Okay, yeah, then uh, I think uh, what is, uh, I think what you told me, I think the camera are the same in both systems. And then maybe on the left side, there is a small DJI LiDAR inside. So they have 200,000 measurement per second and the left one is uh, operating with different kinds of high systems. So maybe for some people, they are a little bit deeper in this scan technology. So, but let, let us move forward. Uh, here we see the two software, which Xcrit um, has uh, developed. So on the left side is uh, Lixis Studio. It's the uh, point cloud processing software and it's based on spatial intelligence algorithms. And on the right, right side, we see Lixel CyberColor. It's a software which creates a photorealistic 3D model by a rendering process, which is derived from 3D Gaussian splitting. And I got a video which shows a processed scan in the software. And we can see we can move freely in the model and we can switch to the point cloud. And this model is uh, from this um, area where we also do our test measurement. So I think given good in introduction. Let's come to what was my task. My task was to check the geometry accuracy of the K1. 
And for that, I did some accuracy testing for indoor applications. And the test field was a hall in the HTV Dresden laboratory building. And the first task was to check the change in room distances after processing with and without the control points. And the second task was a comparison of the point cloud of the K1 with the point cloud of the Fargo Focus. Here we can see the test field and its extensions. The hall is used uh, regularly to calibrate laser scanners. That means uh, we have a lot of control point markers with highly precise coordinates. And here you can see uh, the ground control points, which are used um, to reference the scans in a local coordinate system. I use these four. Yeah, maybe it's something to the hall. The hall is also used from other faculties, so I think there are so machine machine engineering guys inside. So it's yeah, not not right. only like the, the software occupy the hall and and put a lot of reference points inside. So for I think uh, basically they start with testing terrestrial scanners inside. So and and I think they make the network uh, was captured original way with a Leica TS system, so with a super accurate total station. I think they I don't know. Did you have any information how accurate the the um, reference points there inside, or did you know it? Well, no, I don't really have uh, precise uh, data, but I think they are really accurate because uh, to calibrate scanners, they need to be. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, there will be maybe if somebody interested, but I think there will be less as one millimeter uh, for each uh, of these reference point was is more or less uh, enough uh, for us for testing. Yeah, sure. So let's come to the aim of the study. It was to test whether the geometry of the point cloud is improved by using code ground control points and the comparison with the Faro focus. And the process was to uh, the acquisition of the data with the K1 and processing the scans in Lixis Studio and the data evaluation. I think in the pictures you can see there are some information where all the points are located. So I think they are over the ground, but also on higher positions. So I think there's a lot of targets inside. So uh, we got a lot of targets, but we uh, didn't use all of the targets. We used uh, 35 different distances between targets. Therefore, we use targets from Faro, Zoller and Fröhlich and Trimble. Here you can see, I think these are the targets from Faro uh, in the upper right corner. And for the distance comparisons between the control points, I started calculating the spatial distances between the points uh, from the given coordinates. Then I carried out the measurements between the control points in Lixi Studio. And all the distances were between 2.8 meters and 62 meters. And in order to increase the informative value and exclude random errors, uh, each distance was measured three times. And here at the bottom in the middle column of the chart, you can see the mean value of the deviation from the target distances of the process point cloud without the influence of ground control points. And on the right side, you can see the difference to the point cloud processed on the basis of ground control points. And you can see um, improvement of the geometry by 1.3 centimeter for the point cloud process on the basis of control points. Yeah, only that for the audience to understand that you reference um, um, length as this points what we're using, there was not part of these uh, points what we're using in uh, ground control points for the slam. This reference uh, length was complete independent measurement points, right? Yeah, that's right. We only used the four um, base control points here. You can see the these four. Uh, on the ground, yeah, on the ground. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. So it's, it's only awesome. to understand so that uh, yeah, you should be not control points. They are part of the measurements. So. <laughs> but that's yeah, correct, that's right. okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's come to the software cloud compare. Uh, it's an open source software for processing point clouds, and I use the software for a comparison of the terrestrial scan data, Faro Focus, and the K1. For this purpose, I put both point clouds on the top of each other, and I use the function cloud to cloud distance 
which makes differences visually easy recognizable. And the reference point cloud is the Fargo Focus. And the compare point cloud is the point cloud of the K1. And that's the one on which the distances are calculated. And cloud compare calculates distances of the individual point relative to the reference cloud. And the generated scalar field is placed in this cloud. And on the right side here, you see the colored distances. And I also got a video uh, which shows you the coloring of the distances to the reference cloud. Okay. Then. Yeah, here we can see how the distance goes up and we see the most difference are in the range of three centimeters. The green areas are mostly located on the top. I think we just, uh, I think you will tell something to this here that, that we do an analyzing where we have the few areas they have a higher uh, distance, like the red one. Yeah, uh, so the green one, I think it's uh, due to the um, range of the scanner and we have really narrow um, ways. So on the top, we didn't get that good data and the red areas are the interior and the moving parts such as doors or a crane, which is moving. And yeah. Yes. And I think the green one is um, if we we was not able to scan in the middle of like we see that it's more in the middle of the of this um, um, yeah, on the roof. And uh, I think you was only uh, able to scan on the sides because in the middle there was this other laboratory and robo station where, you, where there was no entry, so where we don't have any data. So, ah, okay. Yeah, that's right. So this means, but basically also there was left side, there was like in like in what you call them, like a Gaussian uh, uh, um, sheet. So there was some display on the left side where you saw that the most points are inside of these uh, three centimeters. So mm. yeah, here we have these views. So. We see the side walls are pretty good, and we, what we can see in the middle where we was not able to go in, I think there we have the deviation. So at, at all the area, like this gated area in the middle, you you only walk outside. So yeah, and we can here spot at the bottom uh, a little piece which has uh, higher deviations, and we did some research for that in an other software. And we did it in PointCap. PointCap is also used to process um, point clouds and it's specialized in sectional views. And I have created sections and measured in these deviations. And the result was that the deviations in position are up to 3.5 centimeters. And the requirement of three centimeter from the manufacturer was um, largely fulfilled. And I have also analyzed the height deviations in point cap, and they are usually not higher than zero to 1.6 centimeter, but there's a subsidence in the center of the hall with a maximum value up to three centimeter, um, which you also can see here. These are the green areas. And in the area marked in red, which we can see here in the right bottom corner, um, we got a height deviation up to 8.4 centimeters. So here you can see two screenshots from point cap um, in which I did some measurements and it's all about the problematic area marked in red which we can see here again and i think we have here that high deviations because of that long corridor and we don't have another ground control point in this corner and to check whether the displacements along the set axis are related to the influence of the fixed points during processing the scan was rigidly processed again, and we can see an improvement of 2.4 centimeter. And here on the right side, um, the highest deviation outside the problem area of the rigidly processed point loss was only 2.2 centimeter. 
Yeah, Janis, to the end, what is, what is your conclusion to the Lixel K1, Kitty? Yeah, the K1 is a really efficient scanner. It's really simple to um, use. We got a really good visualization option, options here. For example, the Gaussian splitting. And we got versatile application options. It is a lot cheaper than other SLAM scanners. And we can we found out that we can improve the accuracy by using ground control points. And we largely met the accuracy requirement from the manufacturer of three centimeter. And all in all, the strengths of the scanner are the simple operation, the efficiency and the representation of the data. Yeah, uh, from my understanding, so uh, what you present, it's um, that's um, this K1 is uh, without, we now we see this RTK model was not, but we not tested yet. So maybe do it in the future. So, but we have these, what you see this laser head, these, these half sphere, that's the original come from DGI. So it's, it's only if you, you can buy this uh, sensor by your own, if you like this costs you maybe $800, $900, something. It's not super expensive. So I'm, I'm really surprised what results you get out for measurement points. We know that a super good system to generate Pano images and Gaussian splits. But finally, we can see that that the system on small areas really delivered accuracy of three centimeters. And is with that one a proper survey um, tool for if you don't need these highest accuracy. I'm, I'm right with my, with my own conclusion here. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And it's just a really cool and simple scanner. So it's easily to capture the environment and everybody can use it. And and for you, it was easy. As a student, to, we put this in your hand, we give you the software license, some videos, so uh, how you feel it, what it was easy to learn. Yeah, that's right. I learned it by myself and uh, it was easily to understand. And now we got some training videos online and so everybody can learn how to scan with the scanner. It, I think that wouldn't be a problem. And yes, that's just uh, great. Okay. Also, finally, okay, great tool, uh, great results uh, for medium accuracy, uh, very good uh, visualization. I think I'm I'm um, happy that you do this test. This was a lot of work, so don't don't for the audience. You spend a lot of time. We, we really do an accurate test, and finally, we also a professor look over that we are was able to publish this information to be uh, sure that we're not uh, talking here any measurement bullshit, so I would say. So uh, it is the proper results what we get out. And uh, I know that you also testing other stuff and I, I am happy that we maybe in the future we will present some other accuracy tests with uh, other applications, other systems. So uh, yeah, and for the audience, don't forget if you want not miss the next accuracy challenge, what they should do. And no, subscribe the channel, stay tuned for some other stuff and videos. You know, we speak about a lot of accuracy. There will be many questions. So then leave, you have also the option to leave comments. So, and, and we will check that we can answer them or that we can contact you. So, and for all the uh, uh, people from uh, Germany, so uh, uh, they follow the English version. So uh, if you are interested in the Lixic Kit UK1, so we have it in our web shop and we have also a test offer for the system. So I would say, Many thanks to Yannis, bye-bye, and bye-bye to all the audience. Yeah, thank you, bye.